Hello, everyone. So it's Tuesday, the sixth week of Easter. So and being a Tuesday, try to remember to cultivate uh, a focused devotion to your guardian angel today. And also you can reflect on your divine affiliation, but I'll just focus today on the, uh, the devotion to your guardian angel and also to St. Michael, the archangel, uh, to come and assist you at all different times throughout the day, especially if you're tempted. So cultivate your devotion to your angel Ask your angel to watch over you and guide you throughout the day to always help you to do what God wants you to do. This, uh, no matter how difficult, irksome, seemingly tedious or boring it is, um, because all, all, as long as it's good, legitimate, moral, needs to be done, then we should be striving to do it. You know, from preparing a paper, uh, composing a sermon, to cleaning up our room. You know, all these things are very important. Mother of God kept house. So all of these things are important in God's plan for us, but we resist. And so ask your angel to help you do what God wants you to do throughout the day in the specific tasks. So today we, uh, this person's name is not in the, on our liturgical uh, calendar, but like all the saints, he's important. In this case, it's a he. Uh, all the saints are important. This uh, is, is another Pope, uh, Celestine V. So uh, his name was uh, Peter Morone, Peter Morone. He was born in 1210, and um, it's a rather, for lack of better words, fascinating life. Uh, he was the 11th of 12 children of peasant parents. At the age of 20, he became a hermit on Mount Morone in the Abruzzi Hills. Eventually left his hermitage to study for the priesthood and was ordained in Rome and later became a Benedictine monk. In 1251, he was permitted to return to his hermit's life in the mountains, but his holiness eventually attracted great crowds. You wonder how that could have happened because he, he was a hermit. But anyways, this is the way God ordains it. For, it's like St. Anthony he was a hermit, but people found out about this holy man and they wanted to learn from him. So seeking further solitude, he retired with two companions to Mont Magella, uh, but was persuaded to return to Mont Morone, where he organized the hermits into a community and eventually a monastery with a strict rule. And in 1274, he received papal approval of his order called the Celestines. So this uh, man would have been happy to live his life out this way, but something interesting, interesting for lack of better words, occurred in church history and his relatively peaceful life was disrupted, never to be the same again. After the death of Pope Nicholas IV, more than two years, two years passed without a successor to Peter being elected because there was so much political rivalry in the College of Cardinals. It was scandalous, utterly scandalous. But if you know the history of the church, this is what happens. Peter was 84 years old at the time reputedly sent the cardinals a message telling them that God was not pleased with the delay and that they must elect a successor quickly or the wrath of God would be upon them. I guess he was known for his genuine uh, sanctity, his holiness. So this obviously had weight. But to his horror, the cardinals immediately decided upon the elderly hermit himself. Be careful what you say to people when you're doing this for the Lord. Anyways, despite great, I'm not saying don't do what you're supposed to do or don't do what God leads you to do, but you have to expect things that are not going to turn out the way you perhaps expect them to. Despite grave misgivings, Peter decided that it must be God's will, accepted, and was consecrated Bishop of Rome in August 1294, taking the name of Celestine. The results were utterly disastrous. Utterly disastrous. Um, because Peter was completely unfit for the office of Pope in every respect except for his holiness. And frankly, holiness is not sufficient for these kind of positions. You might think it is. Teresa of Avila herself, the great doctor of the church, mystical doctor, doctor of prayer, said that if she had a choice between uh, a priest who was very pious but did not know much, but a priest who, was, who knew a lot but wasn't very pious, she wouldn't hesitate to take the priest who knew a lot in the spiritual life because that's what she needed. She needed guidance uh, and she, she understood that she could be easily misled by a priest who was pious but didn't know much because Teresa actually was led 
uh, uh, she wasn't given very good advice by some of her confessors because they didn't know how to handle her because she was so advanced in the life of prayer. Um, one of these actually she had written a she said she had written an explication of the Hail Mary and the confessor I believe told her to burn it. She did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, this is what happens when you know, uh, piety is uh, somehow is, is not legitimate or is not infused with proper intelligence or proper learning. So, unfortunately, the Pope immediately fell prey to the schemes of King Charles II of Naples, who took advantage of Peter's simplicity, otherworldliness, and naivete. He committed serious blunders in his short time in office. And we do not know the records of his mistakes because his official acts were annulled by his successor. Uh, you shall know them by their love for one another. Yes. Heartbroken and overwhelmed by the burden of office, he had not sought, he had not sought, and was incapable of fulfilling, he abdicated his office in December 1294. He had been pulled for five months. It just it crushed him, the poor man. Crushed him. Boniface the seventh eighth was immediately elected a pope, and because he feared that the popularity of his predecessor might lead some plotters to attempt uh, to put Peter back on the papal throne, he basically confined him, you could use the word quarantined, confined him to the castle of Fumone. Uh, St. Peter is noted to have said, I wanted nothing in the world but a cell, and a cell they have given me. So after nine months of fasting and prayer, at the age of 86, he was still doing this fasting and prayer. Closely watched by guards, attended by two of his own religious, he died. Probably in the peace that was taken away from him for those five months. So there's lots of things we can draw from, extrapolate from this life. There's always something we can extrapolate and apply to our own, which I think is very important. One of which is um, Peter may have failed as a pope, uh, but certainly cannot be faulted for his love of God in the church. When the cardinals elected him Pope, he was known to have wept at the news, but after prayer felt that this was indeed a call from God to leave behind the monastic community he had spent his life building and nurturing. So how many of us would be willing to give up our seemingly established lives to take on what appears to be an impossible burden? So you can ask this man from his place in heaven, Saint Peter Celestine, for the grace to do as our Blessed Mother instructs us. Do whatever he tells us. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd of Philippians joined the fortune tellers in showing hostility to Paul and Silas, so the magistrates had the two men stripped and ordered them to be flogged. They were given many lashes and then thrown into prison, and the jailer was told to keep a close watch on them. So, following his instructions, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Late that night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing God's praises, while the other prisoners listened. Suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the prison to its foundations. All the doors flew open, <clears throat> and the chains fell from all the prisoners. When the jailer woke and saw the doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to commit suicide, presuming that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted at the top of his voice, don't do yourself any harm. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, then rushed in, threw himself trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas, and escorted them out, saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They told him, Become a believer in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household too. Then they preached the word of the Lord to him and to all his family. Late as it was, he took them to wash their wounds, and was baptized then and there with all his household. Afterward, he took them home and gave them a meal, and the whole family celebrated their conversion to belief in God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You stretch out your hand and save me, O Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. You stretch out your hand and save me, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. You stretch out your hand and save me, you stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. You stretch out your hand and save me, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will lead you to the whole truth. Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time had come for him to pass from this world to the Father, Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. Not one of you has asked, where are you going? Yet you are sad at heart because I have told you this. Still, I must tell you the truth. It is for your own good that I am going. Because unless I go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will show the world how wrong it was about sin and about who was in the right, and about judgment. About sin, proved by their refusal to believe in me. About who was in the right, proved by my going to the Father. 
and you're seeing me no more, about judgment proved by the prince of this world being already condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. How do you think the apostles felt at the Last Supper when Jesus says, you know, don't be sad, it's better that I go actually, because if I don't go, then the advocate won't come. Do you think that this brought them consolation, these words of Jesus? I don't think so. I think they really struggled with this. Uh, they were starting to understand that Jesus was probably divine. They're coming to this understanding of the truth, and then all of a sudden Jesus introduces a third person into the scene, and he says, it's better that I go, uh, or else the advocate won't come. So they're probably really struggling with this statement from our Lord. The Acts of the Apostles is an entire book dedicated to proving that this statement from Jesus, that it's better that he goes, uh, is actually true. The entire Acts of the Apostles just proves it. The power of the Holy Spirit, as we saw in today's first reading, Paul and Silas praying and these great miracles happen. Uh, but how about in our life? Maybe we struggle to believe actually that it's better that Jesus is in heaven, in a sense, that we can't see him in his human form here on earth. I was trying to think about it this morning, how difficult, imagine if Jesus was still here in his human form. I just pictured him at like St. Peter's Basilica, like sitting down on a big chair and uh, with social distancing, it'd make it very tough for people to want to go and uh, see him and talk to him and things like that. Uh, but the words of our Lord and like these things that are difficult for us to understand are a good opportunity for us to be more real and, and honest and vulnerable in our times of prayer. I'm sure there's things that we struggle with. Uh, and it provides a great opportunity just to be more honest with our Lord that maybe you really struggle to believe that it's, it's better that the Holy Spirit be here in a sense, than, than being able to see Jesus face to face. So I just invite you today to, to be honest and vulnerable in your times of prayer. Someone once asked me, he said, uh, if all Jesus knew about you was what you told him in times of prayer, how well would he know you? If all Jesus knew about you was what you said to him, during times of prayer, how well would he actually know you? So I encourage you today to be honest and vulnerable and real with Jesus in your times of prayer. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Bless us be God forever. Amen. 
so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God and his Christ. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to proclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the Lamb of Sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with gospel joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer petitions through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, your and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold it to the truth and all the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and happy countenance, and to accept them as much as we are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, people the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice to the spot of Zedekiah. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to man and these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, and the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, with this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merit, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant you graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, God have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, God have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, God have mercy on us.
I do not at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is in. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us, in God. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who are out of the world seeking the ruin of souls. Joy his courts are.